Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. First of all, two apologies about sound. My laptop is whirring away and I need it because I want to show you something on my phone quickly. Um, I want to show it to you here on the screen. And also my flatmate has just decided to start playing music. So if you can hear that, I am terribly sorry. And uh, there's not a lot I can do about it, to be honest. Anyway, today I'm going to the theatre when am I not? And I just wanted to show you something quickly because Todaytix, which is an app that I'm always going on about, they've actually just gone through a recent rebrand. So I wanted to just show you through the rebrand a little bit and I'm obviously getting my tickets for tonight on the app right now. Yes, I do have a category that is just called stagey. Don't judge me. So as you might be able to tell immediately, the visuals of the app have changed. They've changed their logo and I think it looks quite snazzy. Um, also looks a bit hospital themed, but we'll allow it. We'll just, it looks cool, let's be real. This I love. So I think all of these are like stagey people, kind of celebrity-esque, and it just looks so cool. So obviously I'm on London because I'm in London, but you can change it by clicking the bit at the top and then you can see it's got all the different cities that they are in, which is amazing. So no other UK cities just yet, but I don't know, maybe that's in the pipeline, that'd be quite cool. So at the top they have a few different options. You can have a little swipe through and it'll give you suggestions of like articles to read with different show options. Um, and then obviously, yeah, you've got the different shows. Sorry I'm looking down a lot because I'm looking at my phone. Um, so you can filter it by like the days and like the type of show. So if you want to say play, if you want to say a musical, if you need something that's family friendly. And then you can also select if they do the lottery or the rush or if they do deals which is awesome so if you're looking for just cheap tickets then obviously you can click the deals and then it'll just show you the one that they've definitely got discounted tickets on or as well you can pick the lottery or rush option and it will show you everything they have for that another thing that I'm really enjoying about the well they had it before but this most recent update is the fact that you can have your own list so the shows that you want to book and it's just so easy to obviously just click on that and think right I need to book this I need to book that so as you can see this is what I've got coming up so I've booked to see the Adams Family at the new Wimbledon Theatre with Today Tix uh, I'm gonna book Nell Gwynn in a minute and then Annie's coming up and I really want to see Matilda and Kinky Boots again so that's what's on my list and yeah it's just so good so let's go on to the Nell Gwynn this is at the Globe and I think they've only got the standing tickets. Yeah. And I want, oh my god. They don't actually have today. So that kind of ruins my plan. Well, I did want to get tickets for today, but obviously I'm now too late. It's four o'clock, so I'm gonna have to order them on the website. Um, this is awkward, guys. <laughs> anyway. I should have booked this earlier, but I wanted to like set this up nicely to film, but it's fine, it's fine. So I'll um, I'll have to sort that out now. I can't believe that, that's so funny. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys the new update to the app. And also you, it used to be that you could only book them like seven days in advance. You can now book, I believe, 30 days in advance. I don't know if it's for all shows or just a few of them, but you know, that's a cool thing. So you can book things via the app a little bit further in advance. And as always, if it's your first time using the app and you want to get £10 off your order, you can use my code here and get £10 off. Making theatre cheaper, that's what I'm doing for you guys, or trying to do. Anyway, I need to sort this ticket out and um, carry on with the rest of the vlog, so I'll see you in a bit.
Hello everyone, sorry if it's a bit windy, I'm obviously outside, I've just made it to the Globe Theatre and I've got a new vlogging camera so I feel like weird. <laughs> But it's a beautiful setting, obviously I'm on the south bank. Um, can you see? Yeah, there is St. Paul's Cathedral. Yeah, I said that right. Nice bit of lens flare as well, I'm enjoying that. So anyway, I'm outside the Globe Theatre. Um, as you would have heard from my spiel earlier, I was going to book my ticket on Today Ticks and then realised that was far too late. So I had to just book it direct through the Globe's website. That's fine, I need to go pick it up now and then go in. Uh, this is my first time standing for a show since I saw Les Miserables. Oh no, since we were rocking. You. It was like 2014. Sorry if the wind is bad. 2014, I think. So it's been a while. It's been a minute, as New Yorkers would say. I don't know. Anyway, let's go in and see what this whole situation is like. of Nell Gwyn now and there's such a beautiful sunset behind me. Let's see if the camera will pick up on this. No, it's not picking up on it but I did just get a shot of it. It's so stunning. Obviously I've got the globe behind me there. You can see the little love sign there. I'm really enjoying this so far. I'm not really loving the standing room experience. As I said, the last time I stood for a show was either Les Mis or We Will Rock You and that was a couple of years ago and I just forget how painful it is and uh, even at least with those shows I had they were in like the upper circle so you were angled like you could see down whereas this obviously it's just heads in front of me and there are some people around me that just don't care for the space like they don't they don't give a crap that like I need some room to breathe um, and there's some people on their phones which is really annoying I'm like why would you come to Shakespeare's Globe and just be on your phone why? So yeah, apart from that, I am actually really enjoying it. Laura Pitt Pulford is just amazing. I love her. She is so good. And I just popped to a Starbucks in the interval because there was like queues in the bar, queues for the toilets, and I thought, I'm gonna be savvy. I'm gonna run across that Starbucks, use their toilets, and grab a bite to eat because I'm a bit peckish. And now I'm gonna eat this chocolate muffin and enjoy a beautiful sunset. Welcome back to the chatty section of this theatre vlog. So, as you would have been able to tell, I went to see Nell Gwynn at the Globe Theatre yesterday and I had a standing ticket, because they are the cheapest, obviously, at £5 and then there's like a £2 booking fee, so £2.50 booking fee. So it comes to £7.50 altogether. That's not bad for a standing ticket though, I paid £12.50 to stand at Les Mis and I think I paid like £33 to stand at We Will Rock You but that's only because it was the final performance in the West End so that was definitely worth it but that was a long time ago and I forgot what it was like to stand for an entire show. I think if you're going somewhere like the Globe it's obviously the cheapest option and it's it's like you're being a part of history and I know that sounds really like ridiculous in a way but I just couldn't help but think like how many people stood in that space like all through time it's quite amazing so I'm glad I did it and I'm really glad that I went to to see this show but my legs were killing me. I mainly wanted to see Nell Gwen because Laura Pitt Pulford is in this play and it's been in the West End before quite recently actually I think two years ago I'm pretty sure it had Gemma Arterton in it I can't remember what, what theatre it was at um, but yeah, Laura Pitt Pulford, I've seen her in a few shows now and she is just phenomenal so I really definitely wanted to see her in it and I'd heard that the play was really good so I thought, you know what, I'm not going to miss it this time, I need to go and see it. I didn't really know what to expect from it, I didn't know if it was just going to be like a straight play or if there's going to be any music or any songs involved and it turns out that there was and I really enjoyed that aspect of it because 
I, I love musicals, so if there are musical numbers in plays, that makes me really happy. Not only that, but I really enjoy the, the story of Nell Gwynn. I was just doing a bit of looking up about it, and it's just amazing that obviously it's a true story, it's what actually happened, and she's such a feisty character, and I love that. I love really, like, like it's described in the play, female characters that are actually real, they're not just very, um, what's the word, like two-dimensional, like there's a lot of depth to them and you definitely have that in the character of Nell Gwynn because she's so feisty and she she isn't like washy like she sticks up for what she wants and believes in and I just really admired that and I think Laura Pitt Pulford played that perfectly. The one shame about being at Standing Room at the Globe, um, I got in there about I think I feel like I got there at quarter past seven that I actually went into the theatre and there are like posts towards the back of uh, where the seating then begins. I thought, I'm gonna be clever. I'm gonna stay by this post and then I can lean against something during the show and then it won't be like as painful to stand throughout the duration of it. And then obviously really tall people came and stood in front of me and that was really frustrating. <laughs> so I didn't have the best view throughout all of the show, which kind of dampened my experience of it in a way. So I think if you're going to the Globe and it's a show that you're really desperate to see and you just want a good view throughout, I think it is worth paying a little bit more to actually have a seat and just know that you're going to be able to see everything because there are some bits that I just couldn't see because there were heads in the way. Also I was quite surprised at the lack of theatre etiquette in some moments of, especially Act 1, there were about three or four people near me that were, there was a girl near me that was just checking, like scrolling through Instagram during the show. And this was like 10 or 15 minutes into the show, not even at the very start. And then there was a guy replying to his Facebook messages, someone else just checking their Facebook. And I just thought, you're at the Globe Theatre, fair enough you've paid like the minimal amount and you're standing, but that's no excuse. Like the show starts and you, put your phone away, you put it either off or on airplane mode or on silent and no vibrate or whatever and it just really annoyed me but thankfully one of the, well not thankfully this was not a good thing but one of the, the girl who was checking her Instagram, her phone went off at the end of act one or like towards the end of it so I hope that mortified her enough to then obviously switch it off but it's just, it's such a simple thing to turn your phone off and not annoy everyone else around you and people don't do it. Anyway, back to the show. I really enjoyed that there was so much comedy in this show. As I said, I went into it not actually knowing anything about it. I'd read a very brief synopsis and that was it. So the comedy aspect of it was something that I wasn't really expecting and I was really, really glad to, to see, especially in the characters of Edward, I can't, I can't say the surname, Kiniston? Kiniston? Yeah, that sounds right. Edward Kiniston played by Esh Aladi and he was just so funny because obviously back then in the theater, men played the female roles and he was one of the guys that would play a female role and so for the most of the most of the play he was walking around with like a linen bra on or a linen boobs essentially and it was just so funny his entire performance was hysterical like it was amazing it was just really refreshing to have that funny character like throughout the entire show like he didn't just have a couple of funny moments but like his character was the comic relief so I really enjoyed that. The guy who played the king, uh, Ben Wrighton, he was he was really perfect for it. He had that sort of like smarm of being royalty and his whole attitude. Just the whole cast were really good. And as I said, I loved that there was like the musical elements. So the bows especially, I really enjoyed because there was this one song um, that's like, I can dance and I can sing. and. I can do. It's stuck in my head, but I can't remember the entire lyrics, which was really annoying. But they all joined together at the bows to do that song, and the play ended on a little bit of a sombre note. Um, so I had to have that bows was really uplifting and really fun, and it was just nice to see that the, the entire cast having like a really fun time at the end of the show. Sadly, by the time this video goes up, Nell Gwynn will have finished at the Globe, but I wanted to share my experiences of visiting the Globe and seeing this show anyway. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments below if you've been to visit the Globe or if you've seen this production of Nell Gwynn or the previous ones. I feel like it's been on a couple of times in the last five years. 
and I've just entirely missed it. So yeah, let me know if you've been to see it. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you'd like to see more of me in the future. And I will see you very soon. Bye.